Hey guys, today it's Forrest and Chris from Real Truck, and we're starting the build on our 2016 Tundra. Now, it already has a bunch of great aftermarket parts on it currently, which made it a great daily driver. However, we're gonna jump it up a notch and turn it into an awesome overland truck. Now we're gonna show you the complete transformation over the next three episodes, but in this first one, we're gonna start with the foundation for any good build, and that's with new lift, wheels, and tires. Currently, the truck has fuel wheels and BFG tires with Fox 2.0 coilovers. However, we're gonna be removing all that in order to fit larger off-road components. The truck sits roughly around two inches taller than factory height, however, we're gonna be changing all of that. Now, building a truck like this can seem daunting to some, but it really doesn't have to be. Almost everything we're doing here today can be done in your own driveway with basic hand tools. Now, that being said, we do have an air compressor, air tools, and a lift, so we're gonna take advantage of that. Step one done. How's it going on this side, man? It's pretty nasty on the passenger side. It's going all right. Just got the last of the ABS bolts off and gonna start working on the uh, upper control arm next and each one of these were seized. Thank goodness we uh, used PB Blaster yesterday and let them soak. Legit sheared it. I'm gonna go put a little more PB Blaster on the other side. Yeah. Well, I guess we can't get this cutter pin out, so the truck's just going to have to stay the way it is. I refuse to lose to a cutter pin. There you go. There you go. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Feel for any of you guys that have to live and drive your vehicles up north, because that salt is a brutal, brutal thing. So we have spent the last week hosing this thing down with PB Blaster. So hopefully most of these don't give us too much trouble. That being said, this truck has spent a lot of time up north and is pretty darn rusty. And I hate, I hate working on rusty cars. It's the worst, it takes all the fun out of it. I think the extra dwell time on the PV Blaster is making this easier for me. Forrest, I think we gave you the rusty side. Great stuff. I mean, we're shearing bolts on one side of the truck and I'm using my hands to pull these bolts out with no, with no wrench on this side. I don't know what's up oh, with that. Oh, so everything on your side is just finger tight? <laughs> is that what you're saying? Yeah, something like that. That sound good? All right, got it. I'll take this off. So we're taking this last uh, bolt out from the top hat here, and then we're gonna pull the lower pivot and hopefully pull the whole shock assembly out through the front here. We're gonna go ahead and pull the sway bar end links out. We didn't plan on doing this, but we're having trouble getting the suspension to drop far enough to get these uh, coilovers out. Well, these shocks have certainly seen better days. Although they have served the Tundra pretty well over some salty, harsh winters in North Dakota. Now these can be rebuilt, although that's not the route we're going to go because unfortunately they appear to be a little bit past their prime. All right, well, admittedly, we are replacing some pretty worn out shocks there, but we were after some performance benefits as well, which is why we picked up these Stage 6 Beefy Boys from Icon Suspension, aka their 2.5 VS series shock absorbers. 
Now up front, those are going to be an adjustable coilover providing up to three inches of lift. And both the front and rear shocks in this setup are going to have remote reservoirs, increasing the oil capacity, which provides better cooling and more consistent performance when the terrain really gets rough. The front and rear shocks also feature their compression damping control valves, which are going to allow us to fine tune the suspension performance at each corner of the vehicle, depending on what we're carrying that day, the terrain we're going over, etc. I have a setup like this on my truck as well and can tell you that being able to fine tune the truck based on what you're hauling or the terrain you're going over really enhances the overall experience and performance of the truck. But before we can install these, we need to replace these upper control arms. Now, if you didn't know, Tundras use one giant ass bolt to mount their upper control arm. So we'll go ahead and loosen it up here. We actually need to access that through the engine bay to get it out. So we'll lower the truck down and get it removed. Let me get my morning bench presses in. Golly, that's tight. After just watching that, I'm gonna hit this side with some PB Blaster real quick. So this is where we're gonna go into the engine bay now, make a little bit of room, pull that bolt out, we'll get the upper control arm out of here, and then work on the replacements. So, uh, there's our bolt. It's uh, not going to go anywhere until we move this guy out of the way. So there's just a clip down here we'll pop off. Hopefully that gives us enough wiggle room to slide that bolt forward and then uh, subsequently get it back in. Similar situation on the other side, but it's just uh, looks like a coolant, coolant hose. So a couple clips to undo. We'll get this stuff out and uh, we can keep moving forward. Aha! It's out. Boom. You can see how large that is to pull out from a from an engine bay. All right. Let's see if we can get that out now. Hell yeah. These UCAs like to stay nice and moved up so they don't squeak. So we're just getting them nice and coated here, getting them assembled, and then once we get them on the truck, we'll hit the Zerk fittings with a little bit more. They just slide right in here. You might need to use a C-clamp or something to uh, get them all the way in. I didn't want to have them like pointed out. All right, so what I've got here are the replacement upper control arms that came with our Icon Stage 6 kit. These are tubular steel, super stout, and are going to offer us a number of performance benefits over the stock pieces. Now, Icon started selling their upper control arms with their Delta joint, which offers a number of performance enhancements over the more traditional uniball setup that you'd see in a lot of these. Delta joints are a ball joint, um, but they offer the same high degree of deflection that you'd get out of a uniball, but with the service life of a more traditional ball joint. So you really get to have your cake and eat it too. Also, they're a lot quieter than a uniball setup and are gonna require replacement a lot less frequently. So we're super excited to get these in and we're gonna get started here in a second. It suspends. Alrighty, now that the upper control arms are in, now we can start reassembling the front end and putting our new coilovers in. Looks like we got the right sign here, so let's go ahead and uh, open up some of these holes. We're not enlarging them very much, apparently. part is when the nice stuff goes in. <laughs> oh, we need to take the, hang on. We need to switch the spacer out. One goes on the front. There we go. Now I just gotta get it aligned. 
Get a bolt. Get that bolt in there. This thing can actually apply more torque than my diesel. <laughs> All right, if this slips. I'm gonna give myself a swift punch in the gut. All right, so I'm just gonna snug this guy down. We'll put a torque wrench on it when it's on the ground, but for safety's sake, we'll make sure that it's close. With well, this build, I don't know about you, but it'll be a lot of me doing this. Yeah. All right, guys, we pretty much have the front end of this truck beefed up. We got these sick, nasty upper control arms installed, these giant beefy boy coilovers ready to go. Before we can go full send, though, we're going to have to do a little bit of cutting on this body mount. Before we do that, I'm going to have Forrest tell you a little bit about those beefy tires we're going to fit in here. So the Tundra's also gonna be getting some new wheels and tires because for an off-road style build, we need functional off-road wheels and tires. So for wheels, we went with Method Racing. We went with their MR312 wheels and a bronze finish. These are 18 by nine and a positive 18 millimeter offset. Now that is a similar size and offset to what's on the truck currently. So it's going to keep the wheel and tire inside the fender for the most part, tire sticking out just a hair. Now, personally, I love the bronze finish. I love it on a black truck, but also I love it on an off-road style build because the bronze finish looks a little bit less dirty once it has some dirt, dust, and water spots on it. They don't show up quite as much as if you had a black, silver, or polished wheel. Now these things are also going to be wrapped in Falcon Wild Peak MTs and a 35-12-50-18. First thing you'll notice is this awesome tread pattern with super tall tread depth. It also has rock biters, rock kickers, siping in it. It has a Duraspec three-ply sidewall, so that's gonna help stiffen up the sidewall, especially when we're airing down or it's under load. Also near the bead, there's gonna be a heat diffuser, so that's gonna keep the sidewall nice and cool and won't allow the sidewall to flex quite as much when it's heating up. Now, before we can fit these, there's a little bit more work to do on the Tundra. All right, as Forrest said, we're gonna be running 35 1250s on this build, which is definitely at the upper limit of what we're capable of fitting with this Icon setup. We're gonna to have to go ahead and max out the coilovers to a full three inches of lift to get all the available clearance we can there, but we're probably still gonna have some minor rubbing issues, primarily from the back of the wheel well. And that's because the body mounts on Tundras intrudes into the wheel well space a little bit. All right, so we went ahead and mounted up the wheels and tires. I was a little anxious to kind of actually see how the tire is going to sweep in the wheel well before we started cutting anything. So uh, with that, Forrest, why don't you go ahead and start the truck and turn all the way to the right. So it looks like it's going to contact right at the edge of this body mount, which is what we anticipated. And that plate that we got from Relentless Fabrication is going to allow us to cut out a section of this and bring that body mount back. So what we're going to do is notch this body mount and plate it with this guy. That's going to alleviate most or all of our rubbing on or off road and allow us the most possible clearance for those 35s. We're going to trace out approximately where they're going to sit. Uh, let's put a line here. All right, so we have this more or less roughed out. Uh, most of the changes are gonna come out here at the corner. This is where the most metal is gonna be removed. Um, down the road, once we get everything set up and you know ride height is dialed in and everything else, we may have to come back and do a little minor trimming on this pinch weld.
All right, well, quick check-in. We've more or less got the front of the truck buttoned up, so we're ready to move on to the back. Now in the rear, we're gonna be installing the 2.5 inch VS series shock, just like the front of the truck. These feature the remote re reservoir and the CDC valve that it's gonna allow us to fine tune the performance of the truck, depending on what we're doing. In addition to the shocks, we're also gonna be adding a multi-leaf Adelief pack that comes with the Icon Stage 6 kit. This is gonna replace the overload spring that's currently on the truck now, and it's also gonna net us right around one and three quarter inches of lift, and it's gonna make it pretty even with the front. It's gonna give us a really consistent and progressive spring rate that's gonna be great when we're off-roading. Chris, this is bending the wrench. There's no way. Legit. <laughs> For real, like, watch your eyes. What? Oh my god. You're turning it the right way. Aren't you? Oh, hold on, let's think about that. <laughs> yeah, that's right, right? Yeah, you are, yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Holy cow. Good god. So winner of 2016, winner of 2017, winner of 2018. So three winners in this thing. Some of these bolts are just trashed. Salt is rough. No pipe wrench is not the right tool for the job, but there's no other way to get this off. Short of cutting it out. So we're ready for your comments. These are going in the trash anyway. Oh my god, how's it not off? I don't know. You want to switch? No, 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 it's, it's a personal thing. I'm not going to work this hard to see somebody else's do two threads and get it off. You can have the other one. You know what I'm going to do on the next one? Take the bed off and use an impact from the top. I'm just going to get the saws off. <laughs> I don't know why, we're, we're definitely doing it a hard way. This bolt is red hot. You can, I'm gonna hand this to you. Okay. Yeah, it's warm, all right. Whew. On to the next one. I hope this is this easy the whole time. And now Chris is gonna look way stronger than me. All right, so we're here in the back of the truck. We've gotten the axle lowered down to make room for us uh, working on this leaf pack back here. We're actually going through some of the options with Icon's RXT leaf pack, and it's pretty customizable based on your needs and wants for the truck. Um, and we actually decided to call an audible. So instead of installing two of the three leaves and bolting them right onto the existing leaf pack, we're actually gonna disassemble the stock leaf pack remove the overload like we planned and the third leaf spring and replace it with the third spring from Icon. That's gonna give us a little more carrying capacity in the back of the truck. We decided that because we we're going through the options for the build and what we had planned. We're gonna do in the rack, we're gonna be adding some other accessories to the bed in the future, plus the additional weight of the rear bumper and we felt like that was gonna give us the best combination of ride, lift, and carrying capacity for the truck. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and actually take these out instead of working on them on the truck and we're gonna assemble the leaf packs on the bench. Let's put a nut on there.
That's it. That's a wrap. All right, so the Tundra is back from the alignment shop and the 35s do fit. There is a little bit of trimming required, so if this is where the build ends for you, be prepared to get your grinding wheel out. Now, I certainly wouldn't blame anyone for stopping here. This wheel and tire combo looks awesome. It's added a ton of aggressiveness to this build, but we do have a lot more coming. So check out episode two, which will be coming soon, and see where we take this Tundra next. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for watching our first episode of our build series. If you liked it, make sure you click the like button and make sure you click the big yellow R in order to subscribe so you don't miss our future videos. Now, if you guys want to learn more about the lift wheels and tires we just finished installing on this Tundra, check out the links here or in the description below. We'll see you next time.